and <clears throat> we've been uh, discussing reconciliation <clears throat> and uh, you kind of have to think of it like this <clears throat> and we'll, we'll sort of see this point in the book of Genesis. There can't be a reconciliation unless there was once a conciliation. You can't read anything unless there was that thing at some other time. <clears throat> yeah. And so, uh, <clears throat> so we've been talking about reconciliation. We've been talking about it in the form of, of, of kind. We've been using that word. We're not talking about being kind to animals or any such thing, but we're talking about being of the same kind. And we've actually used the last two classes to help us focus in not on a lesson, but to really find the heart of God in these things. <clears throat> and to release um, the Holy Spirit in a manner that he could break our, that he could break our necks, I mean our conceived ideas. <laughs> <clears throat> our preconceived ideas of what this is all about. And my apologies to Scott's mom, <laughs> who, <clears throat> well, Nicola's good. She knows me. <clears throat> Hi, Nicola. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Carolyn, Scott's mom, I want you to know that that every bad joke I ever tell, I learned from Scott in all these years that we've been together. So, <clears throat> pardon? Doug, I thought you said God was on. I'm going, you're late. <laughs> you know, I need you when I start. I don't, <laughs> I don't like starting in the flesh. <laughs> Oh, you guys are really hyped up tonight, aren't you? <laughs> All right. Okay, so here we are. We're, we're looking at this um, thing. And we last couple of classes, we used uh, the book of Genesis. And uh, right now we're going to be in the first chapter. <clears throat> we used the book of Genesis to introduce two trees. And those two trees were introduced by God, none of the other trees were introduced. Those were the ones that, that was made special attention to. Uh, and um, particularly the Lord said, don't take of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil <clears throat> because uh, <clears throat> it will affect your kind because, as, and we'll read again here in the scriptures that God made man after his own image or as it were in his own kind. <clears throat> and uh, uh, don't eat of that tree. But there was another tree that they never ate of. We find that tree in the book of Revelation all the way back in the end when all of it's supposedly cleared up and everything. And there it is. There it is. It's still there because it's a tree of, of the kind that God is, of his spirit and of his nature and having his mind. And so some scriptures that you're well familiar with, I'm sure you've gotten them in other classes, but uh, as maybe you've noticed, my sharing, um, I'm trying to come from this particular angle of what, I mean, how are we going to understand what reconciliation is unless we realize what was lost and what has been gained? So Genesis chapter 1, verse 11, God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind. There is that phrase, and after its kind... And it is um, designating that there are differences of kind. Whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth vegetation, this verse 12, an herb yielding seed after its kind. And the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself 
after its kind. And God saw that it was good. God saw that it was good. There is, uh, and we'll see it more here, there is this thing that is right there in God before man is even created that there's something that pleases him. There's something that is in his heart. This is before sin. This is, this is, this is as if, may I say it like this, this is as if God is not laden and burdened down with all the sins of the world and everybody's mess ups. This is like before all that. Okay. Where, where what's really eternally there not based on Satan or anything else, which just flows from him. Let the, let the earth bring forth vegetation after its kind. And then it says, and so the earth did what he wanted. It just did what he wanted. And he was pleased. He, he responded, you know. I mean, you know, a lot of times, like, like if I eat a piece of pie that's really good, I go, mmm, you know, I, 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 there's something that just comes out of me, you know. <clears throat> and uh, so, so let's read on. Let's jump over to verse 20. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth and the open firmament. And God created great uh, sea monsters is what my version says. And every living creature that moveth which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after its kind. God saw that it was good. And there it is again. There it is again. Um, and then God blessed them. And he said, keep doing this. You know, keep doing this. this I, I like this. This thing of bringing forth after the proper kind with no influence of sin here. Keep doing it. And, and not just, not, don't just learn addition. Multiplication. Yeah. You know, I like it more. Than, addition is too slow, saith the Lord. <laughs> you know. And it's, and it's a spirit of kind. It's the spirit of bringing forth of a kind. And, and that's in his heart. And that was in his heart before sin. That was in his heart before, I mean, at the very, you know, the very onset of creation, he's saying, you know, we see him going, you know, you see these movies and they go, you know, let the earth, and he's creating. It's the creator. Let the earth be this and that and everything. <clears throat> But he's really saying, let's, let's bring forth the kind that each is and let's find out what you are in kind and let's, let's discover this one, this one area, Th this thing. Okay. Well, you're not going to discover that by looking at the different kinds or whatever. You're going to discover that by looking into the heart of the Lord. You're going to have to find more meaning than a creator there. And only the Holy Spirit's going to show you more than a creator that, that's uh, flowing there. And then, and then again, when it's done and it's, and it's happening, he's, he's saying that's not enough. And, and remember, we started a couple of classes ago where I said, there is this thing in God. And, and so he calls himself, of all names, he calls himself Father, that which not not just husband, father, and, and Jesus calls himself son. And they are and, and they're expressing a deep core reality with them and with him that his kind continue to proliferate. You know. And and so, you know, all of these things. The, the things that we talk there where you, where you might get creation and yet he's trying to show you his heart in relationship to this is what's important and there's nothing else important to me at this stage. You know, 
That's all I'm doing is making kind, you know what I mean? And, and wanting something once it's made. A proliferation. Can I say it in a simpler way? An increase. An increase. <clears throat> and so, um, so immediately following the, these verses, the very next verse, verse 24. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after its kind. Cattle and creeping things and beasts of the earth after its kind. And it was so. And God made the beasts of earth after its kind. And cattle after their kind. And everything that creepeth upon the earth after its kind. And there it is for the third time. And God saw. This is good. So far, he didn't say, well, I don't like that. You know, or I don't like that serpent, or I don't like this or that. There's, there is nothing at this stage going on in the earth except the things that are in his heart, even though it's in shadow form, even though it's, it's, it's creation, which is really meaning old creation in the type and shadow. But in his heart, he's seeing Jesus. He's seeing something eternal. He's not just going, oh, look, there's a bug. And there's another one just like it. You know, it's, thank God, it's more than that, you know. And uh, so then, immediately following that, verse 26, and God said, sound like he just caught a breath. He, he said that it was, he saw that it was good, and then he caught a breath, and then said, and God said, let us make man in our image. Okay, we've been making kinds now, but let's do something of our kind. Okay, and, and uh, so let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the, okay. So he's saying that there is a, there is a dominion kind. Okay, now, now what we would get from that, I fear, <clears throat> is that we're going to be the bosses. We're going to control everything and everyone. <clears throat> that's not, you know, maybe that's right. I don't know everything. The sense that I get is he's saying there is a kind that is superior to all other kinds. This is, I honor that. Okay, and where, do I, where would I get such a weird... Well, you can get it out of Philippians 2. That he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, thought it not a thing to be grasped after to, to be equal with God, but laid down all that down and, and, and uh, uh, became as a man and became as a servant and then became as a criminal, then was crucified on the cross. Wherefore, because he did that, because he had that spirit, wherefore, for this cause, this is the re wherefore God highly exalted him and given him a name, that, that's more than, uh, it's more than rewarding somebody. Yes, that's it. That's right. And I know that's a hard thing for Christians to not talk about it all being <laughs> the result of a reward. You know, well, everything's the result of a reward. No, everything is the result of what his kind brings forth. And Jesus was his kind to the max. And there, wherefore? That's what I love. That's what I am. That's what I'm about. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name above every name. <clears throat> and um, so, uh, let's go on over to chapter 2 now and uh, of Genesis. And verse uh, 16 17. <clears throat> well, let's do 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Okay. 
Now, let me just ask you a, a question. The day that Adam and Eve ate, did they die physically? No. Okay, so what is the normal term used for the death that they did die that day? What does anybody know? They died spiritually. They died spiritually. Okay. What's another way we could say that, a la what I've been teaching here? They changed kind. They changed kind. And now there's a wall between them and God. And now there's a difference. And now there's, there's, there's something. And you cannot attribute this wall and this, this centuries and, you know, millennia of, of separation and of angst between God and man and man and God and this separation. You cannot attribute that to just eating a piece of fruit. You, you should never have eaten just that fruit. That was just, that just hacked me off. Do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, come on. I mean, there's a, there's, you know, I mean, her, you know, I mean, we just accept all this stuff. I mean, I look at it and I go, you know, I don't think, you know, I mean, I could have done way worse. If I was Adam, I would have showed him how to really have some fun. You know what I mean? I'd have done some bad stuff. And then God would have said, doesn't matter. You change kind, whatever you did. You see what I mean? It's not about the deed per se, it's what it did to what he wanted. And remember the last couple of classes. Uh, and well, actually we'll, we'll be dealing with it here. So we'll just, we'll just go there now. Um, chapter two, nine, verse 18. <clears throat> and the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him an help fit. Okay, all right, now, he didn't do that immediately. The very next verse, uh, we, we see that God sort of does a little zigzag on him. You know, it's like, um, the Lord God said, so I'm assuming, in fact, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, this is in the plural here, meaning the Trinity said. He's speaking within himself, not necessarily to Adam, because he's wanting Adam to discover what's important to God's heart. Not just to tell him, look, here's what you should do. You know, that was Israel at, the, at Mount Sinai. Well, just tell us what you want us to do, and we'll do it. You know, you know uh, I tell you what. I won't tell you what. <laughs> it's just that the Lord, he has something in his heart from the beginning and it's flowing and it's going through chapter one and now halfway through chapter two. And then, then he's still bringing this up in relationship now to Adam, but within himself. But then he, points at him in this direction, and, and that's verse 19. And I, <clears throat> let's see. Um, now of the ground the Lord formed, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name there. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to all the fowls of the air and to every beast of the field. Okay, so here we go. He's, he's, uh, God is all wrapped up in this being of the same kind and don't eat of that tree and change kind. And, and, uh, and, and he wants Adam to be with him, not just can I say it like this? Not just to be of his kind, but to understand what that means and to be with the Lord yes. in, in a communion. Yes. Not just in a kind way. Do you understand what I'm saying? You, you know, I, okay, well, I'm after your kind, but I'm dumb. Right. <laughs> so I don't know what this means. What good is that? You know what I mean? But uh, he, so he, he gives he says this, this statement in verse 18 he, he, that 
you know, it's not good that he'd be alone, that he doesn't have one of his kind. But then he says, okay, I got a job for you. Let's name all the animals that I've made, whether it's a bird or a fish or anything. Let's just take a little time to do that. That'll take, you know, maybe a week. I don't know. Yeah, thank you. It will take longer than that. It will take a long time. Okay, so Adam's there, and he goes, okay, here's a, I'm going to call that thing right there, I'm going to call that a lion. You're a lion. Okay, and that one beside you there, I'm going to call that a lioness. A lion and a lioness. Hmm. Whatever I am, I ain't got no S. You know, because they're all coming before him, and he's going, okay, you're this, and you're that, and y'all merrily go away. This, folks, this goes right on down to Noah, too, of every kind. Again, again, and again, and again, when it comes to the real issues where it's earth-shaking to God, not just to us, it becomes an issue of kind. All right, so... You know, Adam named them, but, but Noah had to gather them, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> so here he goes. He's, he's, he's going, okay, male and female, you know, male and female, da 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 male and female, da 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 male and female, male and female, male and female, what? Hold it, Lord. All of a sudden, he's, it's clicking in. You know what? I don't, I'm not seeing that for me. <clears throat> All right, so um, the last part of, uh, well, let's read verse 20 again. And Adam gave names to all the cattle and to the fowls of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found an help fit for him. Okay. All right. Now, those, are, those words are significant. This isn't referring to God. God knew there wasn't one of his kind yet. This is Adam coming to this conclusion. You see that? That's, that's, yeah, he's, he's, that's why God held up acting on his first initial thing in verse 18 and gave him this job because God wants us not to just understand the doctrine of it, but the need and the heart and the desire and the feel and the, and the, and the hunger you know, for it. <clears throat> All right? Uh, so we're familiar with these next scriptures. And, and the, what we're going to read in these next scriptures basically is the process by which uh, God made one after Adam's kind, made a, a woman, you know, uh, lion, lioness, man. Whoa, man. Dude. You know? <laughs> and he... Okay, and, and I'm not going to explain all this part. This part I wrote a book called, what's the name of it? Bride of Christ. Bride of Christ. Okay. <clears throat> See, the Bride of Christ, the Revelation of Christ, the Body of Christ. The, you know, hmm, most of those study manuals <laughs> are, are related directly to him. Okay, so, um, so I'm not going to go over that, but that book really covers a lot of ground. Okay. <clears throat> But we are going to read the scripture so, so that we can make a point here. And the Lord God caused a deep, deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And, the, and Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. That sound familiar to anybody? Ephesians 5. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, and he called her woman because she was taken out of man. Very good reality there. Therefore shall a man leave... Well, we'll just stop right there. Okay. Now, um, in chapter 3. Now, remember what we just read, and I didn't, I didn't comment on, <clears throat> is the fact that God saw the need in man for one of his kind and he, and he gave it to him and it's a picture of Christ crucified 
Most of you know that. All right. Um, but now, now comes the rift, all right? And in chapter 3 and verse 1, <clears throat> and instead of reading all of this, uh, verse 1, if you can just glance at it, down about halfway through, a little further than that, it says, uh, this is the serpent talking, he said unto the woman. You see that? Yeah. Okay, verse 2, first three words, and the woman said. Yeah. Okay, and then verse 4, and the serpent said unto the woman. Yeah. Okay, and verse 6, uh, and when the woman saw. Okay, and then verse, the end of verse 6 down at the end. Uh, let's read verse 6. And when, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. <clears throat> All right. Now, a uh, <clears throat> couple of things. One, this, couple of them, one thing that I addressed uh, in one of our last classes <clears throat> is this fact that now they've eaten and they have become of another kind and now God's the one that's alone without one after his kind. <clears throat> okay. And the question is, you know, God had compassion on Adam and saw his heart and moved to bring about kind, not blessing or anything else. All right. The problem is Adam never looks in God's heart. He never looks there. It's always self-centered now. He's always, it's like a self-centered uh, uh, person that you married that wasn't initially that way, but now is, and all they can do is think of themselves, and the Lord stretches out his hands all day long, and, he, and he's trying, in, in truth, stretching out his hands, folks, doesn't mean you know, I hate you and I'll just destroy you. It's I'm trying to reach you with reality, eternal reality, because I'm God and this is the way. Any, <laughs> you know, Hosea, anything you feel about this situation with your kind, your wife, that's what I feel, but more. You're just a shadow. All right. Of course, he never, you know, he doesn't rant and rave, but he, hurt so deeply to have what made him happy in the very beginning with kind. After, and he made so-and-so after his kind. He said, this is really good. This is good. You know. And, uh, and so now he's longing. He's longing. And, uh, well, let, uh, let's see. I Save your place here because we may come back to it in Genesis 3. But let's move over to Romans 5. <clears throat> All right. Now, may I say while you're turning there <clears throat> that the reconciliation, you know, you know, the big plan of salvation, the reconciliation isn't just something we want. That's something he's wanted since the very beginning of, of time as man knows it. We talk about being lost. God lost something. And the bad thing is nobody even thinks of that. It's all, it's all about us. There's that selfish counterpart. It's all about us. I need to be saved. I need this. Oh, Jesus, you know, I've come, you know, it's that deal of, you know, you come into the throne room, you know, and you lay it all on him. And when you get through talking, you walk out. You don't ever say, you know, hey, you know, what's on your heart? You know, you, you've heard my story. And I mean, I was just like six weeks old in the Lord or something like that. And and I, you know, prayed every day. And so I would go into the throne of grace, you know, when you're a brand new Christian. I'd go into the throne of grace. And I remember in my living room, I'd always kneel on the, in front of the couch and I would just pray. And I'd pour out. And I, I just, you know, I just, you know, wanted him to know everything and wanted to share all my needs and all this. He's God. And I'm just this dumb little, you know, 20, early 20s guy that's just 
in love with the Lord. That's all I can say. But I'm, I'm pouring out all this stuff. And I do that. I do that every day after I get, I mean, from the time I got saved. And then one time I'm in there, and I mean, I just, you know, told him all this stuff. And then, I, you know, it ended with amen. And I was getting up. And it hit me. I mean, I'm talking six weeks or whatever in the Lord. I went, you know what? I feel a little embarrassed, you know, because to me it wasn't religion. This is God, and this is kind of rude, <laughs> you know. You, you know what I mean? If you did that to a human being, and he's God, so, you know, this ain't right. You know, I mean, that's, <laughs> you know, I'm kind of going, yikes. So I knelt back down, and I just told him, I said, you know, I am so sorry for doing this to you. I've done it, you know, I've done it our whole life together, <laughs> six weeks. Right. And I said, I want to know what's on your mind and what's on your heart. And I believe that might have opened the door to something in me that he could begin to tell me his heart. Yeah. Amen. Right. From, from, from yeah, very, yeah. yeah, and so here we are talking about his heart. <laughs> and, um, oh, I just, I just, you know, I just said, you know, and I didn't know how to listen yet to him. You know what I mean? All I knew how to do was talk at the, that point. And I was just like, okay. But I learned. I learned because I, I incorporated that into my prayers, you know, and so that when I came and I prayed, I just said, you know, I'm going to give you time. You know, that, that, that verse that, you remember that book you had once uh, by Andrew Murray, Waiting on the Lord, you know? You know, of course, usually we're waiting on the Lord to do something for us, you know what I mean? You know, but yeah, or for an answer for us or something. But waiting on the Lord just to, you know, I mean, it's like he's probably in shell shock from everybody talking all the time. <laughs> you know, it's like, look, I, I got a lot to say, but I don't know. You know. <clears throat> all right, so in uh, Romans 5, <clears throat> verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. All right, so by one man, and that's Adam, and this is all these verses from here on down are talking about Adam and Christ. And when it's talking about Adam, folks, it is talking about two things. It's talking about, number one, the actual man, Adam. This released through him. And the result of that is the things it talks about. But it is talking primarily about the man, Adam. By one man, sin into the world. By one man, Christ, da 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 da. Okay. So clearly, by one man, Adam, sin entered into the world. Okay. And death by sin. So death passed upon all. So, so. Adam has, as, as it were, assured now that he's going to have his kind around him forever around, you know what I mean? Because there ain't nothing coming forth in the earth but that now. Yeah. Okay. And nothing of God. Yeah. Nothing of God's kind. Mm -hmm. Nothing that he can look and say, that's very good. Mm -hmm. You know? All right. Verse 14. <clears throat> Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Okay, who is the figure of him that was to come? Everybody see that? The last part of verse 14. All right. Here is the wording for us to, to try to comprehend what this is saying. Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him who is to come? Adam's transgression. To, uh, whether you understand it or not, you need to at least see what it's saying. This is the flow that it's saying. It's talking about Adam's transgression, which was only a figure of him that was to come. Okay? Right? I mean, why would it throw that in? And, wh and why there? You ever ask questions? <laughs> I do this all the time. I read and go, wait, hold it, Lord, hold it, hold it, hold it. What? You know. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses over all them that had sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Okay. 
Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, this demands that I hear, you know, this is no big deal, calm down. Or show me, show me in what manner Christ could be a figure, not, or Adam could be a figure, Christ could be a figure of Adam in his transgression. All right, so uh, let's go back to Genesis first, and then we shall leave here. Uh, now, most of you that have read the Bride book um, know my view of Eve. I hope you do because I've never heard anybody else have that view before, ever. I've never heard anybody exonerate Eve. Most men are pigs, and they, <laughs> and they blame the woman for the whole thing, and, and I'm not gonna explain my thing again on, on Eve and, and the real deal there. <clears throat> but this says in verse six again, where's my glass? And when the woman saw, and remember now, we, we, we went through this and it's, uh, talking about the devil said unto the woman, and the woman said back to the devil, and then verse 3, and uh, he, the serpent said unto the woman, and verse 6, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. Okay. She took of the fruit and did eat. You got that? Next part of that sentence. And did eat, comma, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. All right. There is, there is, in this minute moment between the moment that she ate and he hadn't eaten. There is an eternity of reality that took place right there. And it, and it, and it spoke of it there in Romans about Adam's transgression being a figure of him that was coming. All right. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. First Timothy chapter two and verse 14. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Okay, okay, okay. Whoa! The woman was deceived. She didn't know better. And if you, again, if you remember my sharing in the, in the, the bride book, you'll see that she, she immediately turned when she stood before God and God started dealing with this thing. She was the one who really got it right, okay? But regardless of that, you can't go there yet. We're still standing in front of the tree with this thing happening, okay? We're right there, and she has been deceived by the enemy, and she eats, but this says that Adam wasn't deceived. All right. Now let's let's talk about um, let's talk about the process that Adam may have gone through, and certainly, and I'll just say it like this: whether Adam did go through this or not, Jesus did. And that is, all right, so Adam, he's, here's pretty much his experience up to this point, okay? Uh, being formed from dirt, 
naming animals, <laughs> God doing an operation on him and bringing forth a bride out of him that is him, his kind, more than his kind, him. But that's what kind is when it talks about the Lord. And then standing here with this serpent, you know, in this tree or whatever, and she is, let's do it in slow motion, she is taking the fruit and she is starting towards her mouth and Adam is not deceived and he's looking at this whole thing going, whoa, 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 you know, and now this, the situation didn't happen in slow motion. It was like, <laughs> you know, that's Adam going. You know what I mean? But he probably played it over and over in his mind. And she ate, and now she's of another kind. And he's not yet, because he hasn't eaten. Okay? This says that the woman was deceived, but the man wasn't. All right. So he's thinking... He's thinking, you know, well, my creation was cool, but I really don't remember a lot of it. He's going, naming those animals was fine, you know. God, you know, put him in the Garden of Eden, so I don't think he remembers a whole lot before that. He's going, this is, this is great. This is a great place, okay. So the one thing that he goes, this is the best thing that ever happened to me was Eve, his bride, his God-given bride, his, his kind, his God-given kind. He felt, he knew what it was like to be without that. He knew what it was like to see it in everything else around him, including trees and plants and all this kind of stuff. Everything was screaming that, and he knew the depth. And, and let me just say, he knew the depth as man could know it, but... From that, he at least got a hint of what God felt. Okay. And he's, he's standing there, and now he's got a decision to make. Because he's not deceived. He knows what's going on. He has a decision to make. And so, he thinks, you know, I can avoid sin. God said, don't eat. I can avoid sin completely. But I lose my kind. Or I can eat and I'll get her, but then I'm going to be out of whack with God. You know. I will, I will be taking on sin. And in fact, as you could say, I, I'll be taking on her sin. You know, for her to be with her, okay, it's only a figure. It's only a similitude. It's not a, it's not a perfect picture. But we look at Jesus. We look at him and his view of us. And we look at his heart and the, and the, and the, the being. calls himself father and the other one that calls herself son and their whole interaction communion is son pleasing father for being after his kind having his mind having his heart having his you know uh, not like a servant who doesn't know this you know that whole that whole dynamic is God in in reality and the son looks at all of mankind and he knows the agony that it's put the father through because all, you know, remember, remember in uh, Noah's day and it says, and God looked and all that was there was, remember how horrible the wording was? I can't even think of it. It's just horrible. And there was nothing but violence and wickedness and every thought of man's heart, you know, and you're just like, you know, we go, God's sitting up there, you know, and, and 
unbugged other than mad, maybe, hacked off. And, oh, don't worry, I'll just, I'll just kill all of you. Instead of looking and going, this is multiplying, but it's not my kind. It was never meant to be this way. All right. So the son understands kind. And the son says to the father, I think I can deal with this. I think I can deal with this. Well, son, what are you going to do? Well, you remember Adam and Eve and how he, he was standing there and not knowing what to do. And he wanted to be with her. And he didn't want them to be separate. I'm going to go down there and the scripture 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 5, 21, he who knew no sin was made to be sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So Jesus comes down. And to do that, he has to drink the cup. And in the garden, when he's considering this, he's, he's going through a hundred million times more than what Adam went through who Adam doesn't want to be separate from God and Adam doesn't want to, to uh, fail and Adam doesn't want to be in sin or rebellion or whatever with God. But there is this thing of kind that God put in all the creatures and it's pulling him, but he's not, he's not the one. So he don't know how to do it. So he partakes... And when he does, they're back together, one kind, but not, not the kind. So Jesus says, I will, I will drink this cup. And there he is in the garden. And he is going through the same thing. Oh, my God, oh, my God. You know, he's, he's sweating great drops of blood and... You know, you didn't see that on the cross, you know what I mean? I mean, you saw it at one point, but you didn't see it, you know. And, and he's, he's, he's deciding, you know, because he knows what it means. It means on that cross, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Just like Adam, God shows up, you know, Adam and Eve sitting there, and man, they're just they're covering themselves, you know what I mean? I don't, they're justifying and covering and blaming one another, and it's just like, ugh. I mean, we just, you know, we don't understand it from God's perspective. And God is just like, oh, God, this is horrible. This isn't just bad. This is horrible. It's the exact opposite of what I am. <clears throat> so Jesus takes the cup, and he goes to the cross, and and all of the torment and all of the spear stabbing and all of the spitting in his face and all of that stuff that's just nothing what he has gone through is that he has joined to us and and in the I'll put it in outside of the realm of the things we've been talking about and just in the realm of a of a sacrifice, he's become the scapegoat and he's become the, the sin offering and, and all of that sin is on him and therefore he is, to, to truly be a substitute, you have to take it on you. you know. So God has to look at him like he would look at us. So earth goes dark and, you know, earthquakes and you know all this stuff going on and Jesus screams out my God my God why hast thou forsaken me and then and he, he gives up the ghost all right well the difference between him and Adam is that Jesus was a substitute and Adam just joined with Eve not as a substitute, but he didn't want to lose her. Well, I understand love, but I'll tell you what, God's way is the best way. Yeah, amen. <laughs> I don't even know. God's way is the best way. That's, that's all you can say. That's, 
Adam's way brought everything into ruin. Everything, not just, you know, not just the things that you would hope would come to ruin or whatever, everything. And his love was not God's love. It was self-giving, but only for himself. <laughs> but Jesus, Jesus, he says, I'll do this. I'll drink this cup, Father. And I will um, take on their kind. But all, and in the garden he does that. And so he, then he takes that kind to the cross. And, and because he never sinned. See, he never sinned. He was a substitute. He took on sin. Adam sinned. It was a figure. But only a shadow. A shadow is, never will show you the trueness of the real thing. And Adam's figure of taking on that sin... He became sin and of that kind, and he threw the whole thing into uh, a s corruption and a tailspin. So if Satan understands what's going on because he was more subtle than all the creatures, he's looking at Jesus about to drink that cup, and he's going, I've done it again. <laughs> I did it to the first man God had, the one, you know, from the very beginning when God wanted his kind and I threw a wrench in his thing and I made them all after my kind. And now Jesus has come to redeem the son of God. The son of God's here and he's fighting me and stuff and he is not smarter than me. He's, I'm going to get him. So now he's got him in the same vice and that is you got a choice, Jesus. You can either stay pure Or you can join with her, the bride, or what would become the bride. And the devil's laughing and hissing and mocking, going, this is, this. I'm, I'm duplicating the whole thing all over again. These guys can't figure it out. Not knowing Jesus is the substitute. Jesus goes to that cross and he puts that old kind away. Crucifies it. And he rises from the dead, a new kind with us in him, with his kind of life, because it is his life in us. And the devil goes, oh, my God. <laughs> you know, had the princes of this world known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Amen. Father, we just ask you to help us to contemplate your heart and these things and Lord, to see beyond all of the religious teaching and to find stuff that is really identifying who you really are and the way you are so that we can get with you, line up with you, so that the word of God can be spirit and life and not rules and, you know, religious rites, Father. So, Father, we just ask that you uh, move by your spirit as we yield our hearts and say yes, Lord, to you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right.